the phase three comfort trial demonstrated some rapid and really uh, durable improvements in patients with myelofibrosis as well as improved survival. Now here at ASCO, we have a look at long-term outcomes with uh, ruxolitinib, and this is five-year updated data from Comfort. So for this, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Ruben Mesa, a professor of medicine at the uh, Mayo Clinic Cancer Center. Welcome back, and let's start with some background first. Tell me about Comfort. Sure, well the Comfort studies, there was a Comfort 1 and the Comfort 2. Comfort 1 study was in North America, which was ruxolitinib versus placebo in patients with intermediate and high-risk myelofibrosis. In parallel, there was a European study that was ruxolitinib versus best alternative therapy. Here at this ASCO meeting, we present the very impactful five-year follow-up data from that Comfort 1 study. And what did you find? Well, what we found was really a continued confirmation of the benefit of ruxolitinib in these patients. Uh, a clear improvement in survival, uh, and it was a study that had a crossover, so we see a difference in survival even between patients treated with ruxolitinib versus those that initially began on placebo and then crossed over to ruxolitinib by uh, anywhere from 26 to to 81 weeks. Right, you had I think about 154 patients randomized to placebo and about 111 of them ended up crossing over to, to Correct. active therapy. Correct. Now, Correct. When did this happen usually? Two weeks, three weeks? Typically, weeks. typically a minimum of six months in terms of the crossover. Okay. You know, up to really six to 12 months was really kind of the time that pretty much everyone had crossed over. And in terms of where you think this fits in now. I mean, we've, you know, it's been around, but we now have this five-year data, which is always encouraging. Sure. Where does this fit? Well, it's clearly the frontline, you know, most impactful medical therapy for myelofibrosis. If you think about patients with advanced myelofibrosis, it's really a question of ruxolitinib or in a select group with very high-risk disease transplantation. And so what's next? Well, at the moment, one, I think there's expansion of testing ruxolitinib in patients with earlier disease to see whether it might further uh, impact the disease course. There's a current study with lower risk patients but with high risk molecular features. Uh, additionally, many ongoing combination studies to see, as we learned from many other malignancies, are there other combinations that might be more impactful than single agent ruxolitinib, uh, which are ongoing and the results anticipated with great interest. Well, thank you once again for your time coming here with uh, Ash Clinical News. And we have a variety of coverage from uh, the ASCO meeting. Please check online and in print. And for uh, American Medical Communications, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.